All right, folks, Wedek here from Metal One here with us today. We have one and only Wednesday 30 in front, man. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. Uh, you must be pumped up, excited for the next phase of, of you know, the Wednesday 30 in career. Yes, I'm uh, super excited. We, uh, we haven't played a, sh uh, a show with the full band since uh, Halloween last year, so it's been a uh, several months off and uh, we're excited to finally be going out on the road in a few weeks absolutely and condolences just another month left for the release and you have already unleashed blood sick and what the night brings as well how have the fans received these two videos so far uh, it's been it's been great uh the reaction for both videos have been uh have been overwhelming and and uh, been a great response uh i think the first video shocked a lot of the older fans maybe they hadn't been following us for a while that had just maybe haven't heard the band in, a, in several years so when they saw the video and heard that track it maybe shocked them quite a bit because it was a heavier track and the band kind of had a has a darker image maybe compared to what it was in the very beginning so i think that that video maybe shocked some of the older fans but uh when we released the blood sick video last week the fans uh reaction to that seemed to be even better just because they a lot of the fans saw I guess maybe the older Wednesday 13 kind of style, or at least what they said, they it reminded them of a of the Transylvania era Wednesday 13. So it's it's a good reaction. Both both tracks had a different reaction from the fans, and that's uh, that's awesome because we think every song on this record is is different like that. Every song is different from from each other. That's really good to hear. And obviously the the album itself starts with Last Rise, and as soon as you know <laughs> it kicks in with also the lead single What the Night Brings. I kind of get the feeling that there's a good, fun, traditional Wednesday 13 song. But once, you know, the, the straight after we are hit with tracks like Cadaverous or even Bloodsick, and it's a different thing altogether. So it kind of felt to me like you were opening the album with more like, this is what we did, and directly followed up with, now this is what we do. Would this yeah. be fair to say? Yeah, I, th I think that's a perfect way to say it. The essence of these tracks is in such a way that there's a lot of diversity, like you said, that every track is different, and and that's some that's what keeps condolences as a departure from from the punk goal, or even you know it it instead introduces the horror metal master to the table. So would this yeah. be a, a sort of an accurate observation when you look over the let's say the evolution of your career from Transylvania to condolences? Yeah, I think uh, this, the way we, we approached this record, I, I wanted to do everything different than what I've done in the past, um, change the formula up, so, so to speak. Like on my first record, I mean, on my first three, three or four records, I was writing everything and playing almost every all the instruments. And, and when we came back out after Murder Dolls in 2011, I've had the same lineup for all these years. and We've just became a band. We, we tour so much, we play as a band, so I wanted to incorporate more of a band vibe into this so that's why we when we sat down to write this record we we sat down with that in mind going all right cool we have to write a record but i want every song to be different from each other i don't want to have 13 tracks of the exact same song it's just that's boring to me so we we set out every time we, we wrote a song we went, cool all right well now we, we've got cadavers so we got a song like that now let's do something different let's write something that's fast let's go that so we wrote you breathe i kill all right let's write something slow we did death infinity so it was just we wanted to write different styles of songs and we knew what we wanted to do. And at the end of the day, when we had all those songs in front of us, we were like, wow, this is, we get this really diverse, uh, you know, list of songs here. Absolutely. And as you were writing this album, you know, where, where, where do you, you know, were you guys able to reach that point where there were so many songs that came out and then you had to kind of select which ones right can fit the album? Um, luckily we, we, if if we weren't feeling a song, if we weren't we weren't sure about it, we just kind of stopped. We, like all these songs that we put on this record were the ones that we that we wrote. We were like, wow, these are these are really cool songs. And and so we we basically wrote just just enough songs. I think we maybe had one or two songs that didn't didn't really make the cut. That were just kind of like, eh, that's not as that's not as good as the other ones. But for the most part, we just wrote that batch of songs. We didn't really have that much le left over, really. That's really cool, and obviously the, the guitars and the drums have an incredibly strong presence. You know, both Ramon as well as Kyle kind of really lock horn here with a sort of a marriage between both of their playing style, which is really impressive. And I also got to know that instead of passing the demos back and forth, you guys kind of got together in a room for a couple of weeks and then wrote this album together. So did this kind of influence that the newer, heavier sound now we are hearing from the band? 
Yeah, it was uh, the, that's great. You mentioned that. That was uh, something I I noticed immediately was uh, was was just the the bond between uh, our, our guitarist and our drummer. Just the way the drums and guitar lock in together. Just when they were when they were coming up with some of the riffs and we were writing the songs together, I just you couldn't help but notice just how well they accent each other. It's almost like Kyle's drumming fits perfectly with his hand on his guitar. It's it's insane. It's uh. So I that that's something that when I listen to the record I'm just like wow the drumming and, and guitar just the way it locks in is just it's 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 impressive and uh, so that was a lot of fun to watch too when we were writing the record because we got to sit there in, in, in a room and work on it and make sure it was it was perfect and it wasn't just passing demos back and going all right well try to try to play what I did on this demo or something you know indeed that's really good to hear and you know on every one of your records you've always sat at the you know in the producer's chair. But this time around, with condolences, you trusted Zeus, which is, he's one of my favorite producers with, with Queen's Reich, Sanctuary, you know, he did even the last Murder Dolls record. So mm -hmm. why did you decide this? I mean, was it sort of a time to take a break from a producer role? Well, I mean, over the years, the reason I was always producing my records was literally just because of, of budget and, and money-wise. It wasn't like we ever had a a big amount of money to hire a producer most of the time like when I I wasn't on a major label I just did everything kind of DIY but like I said when it came time for this for this record I wanted to change everything I wanted to change the way we wrote the music and then I was like all right well we've we've created all these great songs now we've got to now we need to change up how we record it and for me I wanted to have an outside ear I wanted to have a, a, someone come in and, and go all right well maybe change this because for me I just I'm so close to the music sometimes it's hard for me to make a decision so I wanted someone there that could go all right that's good enough don't do that change this do this and uh, so when it came time to do this record I knew I wanted to do something different I wanted it to be the biggest biggest sounding Wednesday 13 record and um, I'd kept in touch with Zeus since we since we recorded Murder Dolls and I hit him up and I was like hey man I don't have a record deal now. I want to record a record. You're the man. I know you can make it sound great. What do we got to do to make it work? So we worked out a deal and uh, we got it done. And that's uh, it was amazing for me. It was just I, I loved it. It took so much stress off of me just knowing I had someone else in the chair going. At the end of the day, he could go, all right, that's that's good enough because I I never know when it's when to, when to stop recording or stop adding stuff. It's like, all right. He was the one that decided. So it was a uh, it was great and. Uh, it took the stress off me, and uh, I think he made it the best sounding Wednesday 13 record we've we've ever done. Absolutely, an outside ear always helps a band to sort of get a right direction. Right? Not necessarily that you know you've been on the on the producer chair for a long time, so obviously some inputs from from Zeus would have kind of uh, opened some doors for Wednesday 13 on this album. Yeah, it was it was great. I mean, uh, he just he he really approaches it with a really simple uh, it's a simple approach. Like we don't try to go overboard like uh you know in the past i've did vocals where i'll layer vocals and do you know courses or weird parts i'll add all these layers and things like that and this time i didn't really layer much of much of anything it was just really kind of easy and natural and i don't think i spent that long actually recording the vocal tracks it went it went pretty smooth so uh again it just it was just so much easier having someone there to end of the day to go all right this is this is good and you know without you sitting there you know yourself saying that Absolutely. Your vocals are terrific on this record. I mean, I dig each and every, even the lyrics are more, you know, uh, feels really good when I read them along, when the, when the music is played. And there are also some, uh, some of these uh, heavier elements there. I mean, obviously the guitars are doing a great job, but there are those sounds, you know, like, like a thermon or even an organ at times. Was it something that, you know, the kind of sound, something you were looking for specifically on this album? The the amazing thing on this record is uh, all the all the different sounds and all the things you hear besides like the just the basic guitar and drums like all the what sounds like keyboards and stuff is is not keyboards this time it's all it's all guitar that's all our guitarist that's all of his all of his effects and everything he's worked in his guitar he spends hours creating these these effects and sounds are like they're just how he makes them in his guitar sound so it was really cool this time we didn't actually have to use a a keyboard to achieve all these these really cool sounds like in the beginning of of the of the last rites it's all these just different different sounds so it was really cool this time 
Absolutely, that's really good to hear. You know, the, obviously a month left. I'm sure you know this this waiting game is kind of sucks because you know you have to wait till the till the album is out and get to hear uh, fans. But I do know that you're you're taking the album on road uh, pretty quickly after the release. So anything else that has materialized so far in terms of taking it to Europe? Yeah, we uh, we are uh, we are doing a, a European tour in in November, and uh, I think we are announcing some of those dates, uh, possibly even this week. I should be finding that out uh, later today. So, uh, yeah, we have a we have a full year ahead of us, and uh, I plan on doing as much touring everywhere I, I can. This is a really really big record for us, and uh, we've been off tour for, for several months, and all we want to do now is just go on tour for the next two years and get this record out in front of everyone and show everybody what, what we've got. And, uh, I think we're at this point, I feel like as Wednesday 13, we're at the top of our game. I don't think we've ever sounded better. And our new live show is just, we've taken it to the next level as well. Awesome. That's really good to hear. You know, coming, coming to the murder dolls, you have this great eight year, nine year sort of a theory, <laughs> which somehow yeah. you guys have followed since the time the band was created. The first album gap, second album gap and so on and so forth so you know joy is busy as well with this new band Vimic, and i believe they have a new album coming out this year so once mm -hmm. you both are done with your uh, the release cycle and the touring cycle for the respective bands do you see a possibility of a new more adults record absolutely i i think that's totally possible and i i think that's uh that's something that's probably gonna fall out that fall in exactly like that I, i've been saying 2019 would probably be around the time that both of our schedules are, are freed up and and we can schedule something to work and uh you know for me i i would love just to get together and and do do a handful of festival shows or something in europe and 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 see how that goes and if we have a good time and the reaction's good and we want to keep it going and talk about doing a record it's just something we could do i, I don't see any reason why we can't keep that band functioning it doesn't have to be a full-time thing we could still do our, like you said, do our respective bands. I can keep Wednesday 13 going. He could keep doing his band. And we could just visit Murder Dolls whenever whenever we want to, and it's fun. Make it be a fun project. Because that's what it was in the beginning anyway. It was meant to be a fun project. So why not leave it as, as that? Absolutely. You know, what is it about Murder Dolls that created that sort of a status in the scene and something that connected you guys to the fans pretty close? I don't know. I... I uh, I think just the time that we came out, it was such a unique time that we came out because it's it was like the the end of new metal. New metal was kind of going down the drain, and then like this the the emo screamo scene was sort of coming was was on the way, and we were just that band that just kind of came in there, and we didn't we weren't new metal, we weren't emo, we were just this kind of snotty punk glam influenced hybrid of, of sorts and we just kind of we, we related to people there was no one out there like us at the time there was no other i guess band that was sort of doing i guess the image and sort of had that that attitude so we were just that unique band that came out and we related to the people and it's just uh and it's crazy like it's been 15 years since that first album came out and we still have diehards that when they hear the possibility of us getting back together they lose their minds so I would love to do it for the fans. I think it's cool, and I think it's great that it's lasted all these years. It shows that it wasn't just some dumb side project. Absolutely, man. Totally agree with that. So if you had to sum up the record, condolences in a sentence, what would you say? Well, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, one sentence. Um, I don't even know how to explain it. I would just say uh, this is the... Uh, I hate to use the word serious, but it's the most serious sounding record i think i've ever made but it still got its uh it still got its its hints of of uh of of the old the old style there but i don't know if that's answering your question or i could put it in a sentence but uh it's just uh it's hard to explain i don't know it's uh this is just to me this is the ultimate wednesday 13 record it, it just it it speaks for everything that we've ever done and everything that we do and are going to do Perfect. Are there any misconceptions about you which you come across online which you would like to clear? Obviously, fans cannot know each and everything of, of their favorite musician, but is there something which uh, maybe you are surprised, like, what the hell? I was never like this. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I think um, some people, I think, like I said, for the, for the, for the diehards that follow 
everything we do and read our every Twitter comment and followed us on every social media and every little video. I think over the years they've got to know my sense of humor and know that when they see that image of me that I'm not like that 24 seven and walking around taking myself seriously where I think I'm like, you know, like some people just may make him off thinking, Oh, that guy's thinks he's Dracula 24 seven or something like that. And it's, and it's not like that. You know, I have a, I, I, I know it's a, it's part of the show. It's the image and things like that. And I, and I don't take myself too, too seriously where sometimes the image of certain bands can come off and some bands do take themselves way too seriously. And I'm, Definitely not, not like that. Thanks a lot for spending some time. You know, good luck with the release, and I'm going to catch you on road in, in, in Europe uh, very soon. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.